Once again, Matt in the Middle is here to provide a venue for you, the people of America, caught the killing fields of the ongoing war between the right and the left. This week, as it has been, in the back or the forefront of many people's minds, the oil crisis in the Gulf of Mexico that doesn't seem to be subsiding. In fact, it looks like uh, it could become the worst oil spill that's ever been recorded. Between five and 20,000 barrels of oil being released into the water every single day. That's an estimate. It could be much more. I've heard something in the area of 40 to 45,000. So, if you do the math of the 56 plus days between that and so you're talking about generally if it's it's more than 280,000 which which already is worse than the Exxon Valdez which was 20 years ago could be as much as a million barrels of oil let me give you some perspective about square footage in terms of what we're talking about a football field is approximately 60,000 square feet a barrel of oil is about 5.6 cubic feet so if we split the difference on the guesses in terms of the amount of oil that we've heard that's been coming out of that hole every day for the past 56 days let's let's pick a nice round number like 10,000 at that number it means there's enough oil to cover one football field every single day and that's since April 11th that's 50 football fields and that's just the minimum that's more football fields that are in the entire NFL it gives you some perspective of terms of what kind of damage we're talking about on a minimal on a minimal basis yet as of today British Petroleum seems no closer to plugging that hole than they were on day one and now the president of the United States is taking the heat for it <clears throat> he will be giving a speech on addressing the nation uh, on the crisis is it too little too late it's being compared to the Katrina aftermath and how the Bush administration handled it of course a lot of that criticism is coming from the right and those people are saying the same people who say they want less government involvement in commercial affairs are now saying how come you're not doing more to get more involved at the very least that this disaster um, has it all let's make no let's make no mistake about it. it cuts across almost all of the issues on the american landscape the environment business elections food jobs the economy the middle east and iraq travel the tort system the list goes on and on so don't put your head in the sand and I certainly mean Middle East sand or wherever it is sand that you're is, but that's the euphemism there. Don't put your head in the sand and say to yourself, it's not my problem. I live in Minnesota. I don't eat seafood. I don't drive, and I don't work in the energy business. You're going to be affected by this in one way or another. So we want to ask the question again this way. What more can be done to stop this disaster and certainly more importantly, prevent something like this from happening again? Those pictures you see folks with those oily birds and those soot-covered beaches, that is only the beginning. It is only be the beginning as that is just a fraction of what is out there. So, as we always do, we try to bring in people who actually know what they're talking about. Today, we have someone who is considered at the very top in the field of studying the effects of oil spills. He's a Ph.D. oceanographer who's an expert in deep-sea ecology, ecological indicators for oil and gas, and high-tech imaging of the ocean. Much of his work has been focused in the Gulf of Mexico, and it has been applied in scientific management of offshore energy in the exploration of it. He's a professor at, the, at Florida State University, certainly one of the experts who should be able to tell the president who's asked to kick. Dr. Ian McDonald joins us now on Mad in the Middle. Doctor, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Good morning. So, I know it's it's too it's it's not an easy thing to simplify, but what is really going on with this oil spill, and how much oil are we talking about? 
Well, we're talking about huge amounts of oil, um, somewhere between 20 and 40,000 barrels per day, um, and uh, that's uh, on the order of uh, 1 million to 2 million gallons per day, I suppose. Um, and that's been flowing steadily uh, at that rate uh, up until the early part of June when they uh, were able to cut off the top of the riser and insert this um, this uh, uh, collection funnel. Um, unfortunately, and they are recovering oil up the collection funnel, and that prevents some of the oil from going, some portion of that uh, 20 to 40,000 barrels per day, some portion of that is being captured. Actually, we know exactly how much is being captured. It's about 15,000 barrels per day. And at the moment, that 15,000 barrels per day is the total capacity that BP has on the site to collect oil. So um, they they prepared this funnel cap as sort of their last uh, last uh, chance for, for intervening with the oil spill. But unfortunately, they only initially uh, prepared for recovering a capacity of 15,000 barrels per day, which leaves the rest of the oil just to escape into the ocean. I heard you making comparisons to football fields earlier. Uh, actually, the area of the oil spill is probably about the size of the state of South Carolina, oh. um, and so and that's spread over um, you know a wide area of the of the northern Gulf of Mexico. A lot of the oil has escaped around the um, the Mississippi Delta and has moved into the Western Gulf, and then there's a huge uh, area of spill which is unfortunately getting well. It's already made landfall you know horrifically in uh, Louisiana. But more and more, we're seeing oil coming ashore in significant quantities in the panhandle of Florida, Mississippi, and then Alabama as well. And uh, looking at the, the distribution of oil in the surface, as we do every day with satellite images, uh, unfortunately, we can see oil that's going to be coming ashore throughout the Gulf region, I think, in the months to come. So this crisis is, is severe, it's acute, and unfortunately, there's no solution in sight, despite the best intentions, I'm sure, of the president and, and his entire administration, this is an extremely difficult situation to control and react to. Is BP selling the president and the public a bill of goods that is really not for sale? Well, I think BP has put out a number of very misleading statements um, going back to the beginning of this. I mean, Tony Hayward is famous for having saying that this is a tiny amount of oil and that the Gulf of Mexico was a very big ocean, and therefore we needn't be concerned. Um, more recently, for weeks and weeks, BP uh, estimated that the rate of the flow was not 20,000 barrels per day to 40,000 barrels per day, but somewhere around 5,000 barrels a day, and they continue to insist on that number uh, leading on. And um, it, it seems fairly certain that they that they put out this low estimate, that they arrived at this low estimate uh, pretty early on in the crisis, and that they stuck to that despite uh, lots of contradictory information and evidence. Uh, and they continue to, to ins insist that, and they continue to insist that all of their engineering efforts and response efforts were built around that up until the time when they realized that it was clearly much, much more. Um, more recently, uh, BP has denied the existence of the midwater uh, plumes of oil and gas that we were now have co uncontroversial evidence for from uh, collections made by ships at sea. Um, so BP has not been an honest broker of information in this, I'm afraid to say. Do you think if executives are uh, found to be criminally liable and are arrested and sentenced, uh, if that turns out to be the case, do you think that will send a message to the executives of the other oil companies who may be engaging in similar, similarly negligent operational behavior right now? Well, I think, I think that certainly would send a message. But I tell you what, I think that every other oil company executive and every safety guy anywhere out there is looking really, really hard at what they're doing. And, boy, they don't want to be caught as the next uh, BP. Um, and I, so I think this is a wake-up call, you know, across the board. I, I think the energy industry will hear it. I think that they are hearing it, um, but uh, I don't think they can do it alone. I think that there has to be a, a revitalization of the inspection, regulation, enforcement, um, you know, with the you know intent of having real toughness and real teeth in these in these safety regulations and making sure that they're enforced. Dr. Ian McDonald from Florida State University. It will be months, probably even years, as the effects of this will be felt for quite some time. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome.